All right. Ladies and gentlemen, it is time for our main event of the evening. Scheduled for 12 rounds and on the line, the WBA Super Lightweight Championship of the World. Introducing your combatants first. Fighting out of the blue corner, please welcome Johan Perez. So here we go, coming out to a lot of booze. You have Johan Perez fighting out of Venezuela. As I said, 17, one and one, 12 of those wins by knockout. Are those numbers anything that should worry Mr. Spadafore? Uh, I mean, I don't think he's gonna have anything that uh, Paul hasn't seen. I think the fact that he's a fresh, hungry guy makes him you know, dangerous in this fight. The uh, the only fight I saw of his against the Slick Southpaw was against Alberto Mascara, who was 16-0 at the time from Panama, and they fought to a draw. It was a, uh, a very disputed draw in, in which, uh, you know, Mascara, I thought, uh, won the fight. He was just a little slicker, and he definitely had trouble with the Southpaw. So it'll be interesting to see, as I asked him in the fighter meetings earlier uh, this week, how he could prepare for Paul Spadafora with, uh, you know, with, Trent, with bringing in sparring partners in Venezuela. And he assured me that he'll be prepared. But, you know, it's, it's like anything. You, you don't know until it's in front of you. It's very hard to find a guy that, that can mimic Paul's style. I know talking to Mark Ankello, he said that Perez truly 100% believes that he's going to come in here and he's just going to beat up Paul and he's going to take this belt home with him. So he's not here to lay down and lose, I can tell you that much. The moment the crowd's been waiting for. And his opponent. Fighting out of the red corner. Paul Spadafora. If you can hear this crowd, and they are loud for Paul Spadafora. I've been to some big fights. This is an electric I, I tell you what, I would put this crowd up against any big fight venue that's happened this year. Battle 4 has yet to come out from the back. Still waiting the arrival of Paul. So while we're waiting for Paul, might as well get into it. He's 48-0 and one, 19 knockouts. Obviously, you know, most people know about the numbers, but we'll get into that. Trying to become a champion after 10 years. Trying to tie Marciano's record. Go behind the numbers and tell us everything that well, has to do with Paul Spadafore. I mean, it's, it's literally a new incarnation of Paul Spadafore. It's similar to what George Foreman did going away you know, for 10 years. Paul's essentially been on the shelf for 10 years. He had a management and, uh, and a promotional issue with his regional promoter who just simply would not put him in the ring with the top fighters when Paul was at his absolute best. And it cheated Paul in the boxing public away from seeing him do what he is capable of doing. And at the end of the day, he, uh, he's still the only guy to get the best of Floyd Mayweather, whether it was in a six round sparring session or, or uh, a 12 round main event. So. Paul Spadafora has a lot to prove, but Paul Spadafora has overcome a lot. He's proved a lot, and uh, he's here for one thing, and that's to take home that uh, that world championship. He's got on the gladiator gear tonight, so you know it's going to be on. Now, what does it speak to a guy like this? Basically, like you said, on the shelf for 10 years, he's fighting five pounds above his prime weight. What does that say to the dedication? Well, he had, he had moved, yeah, he had moved to 140 and vacated the title. He never lost this title in the ring. His last fight at the highest level on HBO was a, uh, a draw to Leonard Doreen in a unified WBA IBF title fight. So he's never lost in the ring. Just the, the uh, close draw 
and listen to this crowd. I mean, Un unbelievable. When, when the Pittsburgh kid comes out, everybody seems to show up. Ladies and gentlemen, Roy Jones Jr. presents in association with TNT Promotions, Oscar De La Hoya's Golden Boy Promotions, your main event of the evening. It is scheduled for 12 rounds and on the line, the WBA Super Lightweight Championship of the World. Sanctioned by the West Virginia State Athletic Commission, your three judges scoring this championship contest. James T.U., Rex Hagen, and Glenn Feldman. And once the bell rings, your referee in charge of the action is Charles Finn. Introducing your combatants. First, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing white, official weight, 139 pounds, 18 professional bouts, 17 victories against only one defeat with 12 wins coming by way of knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, presenting the former WBA interim light welterweight champion from Caracas, Venezuela, Johan El Tarible. His opponent, fighting out of the red corner. Wearing black, turned in yellow, official weight, 140 pounds. A historic professional record, 48 victories. One draw, no defeats. 19 wins coming by way of a knockout. Presenting the former IBC lightweight and IBF lightweight champion of the world from the Keys Rocks and Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Wow. Unbelievable. I, I can't even believe the atmosphere. Spanafora! Wow. Wow. Referee Charles Fitch with your Both official fighters instructions. fighters look absolutely dialed in. left is give instructions in the center of the ring and then we are in a fight expect uh, Perez to come out early he is a he's a faster starter than Paul Paul works and he works up in his fight the longer the fight goes the better chance Paul has Perez, very rangy, very dangerous. He's a young, hungry guy. He looked really, really good on Show Extreme in his last uh, fight. Took the undefeated record of a fighter. Yeah. Yoshihiro Kamagi. Here we go. World title is on the line for 12 rounds, super lightweight. That's the 140 pound division. Now you can hear a pin drop. <laughs> yes, you can. The eye test says that uh, Perez really isn't any longer than Paul. Uh, no. You forget how long he was at, at lightweight, but you know, moving up to 140, it's a one inch height and, and, uh, and they're the same reach. Didn't take long for the chance to start up. Ooh. Nice straight right by Perez. Perez got through there. Now, is there, I know, you know, Paul's done it for a long time. He's been here, he's been at this venue, defending a world title, fighting for a world title. But is there any added pressure on him 
or you know you're looking at well I got a whole you know city a whole crowd on my back does that put any pressure on you make oh. you fight different maybe there's it's beyond pressure for Paul Spadafore at this point it, it's a lot like the Wiz Khalifa and Two Chains song talks about this is that one moment this is the biggest moment of his life it's his it's his uh, reincarnation he's back in the spotlight he this this fight here puts you in position for Danny Garcia uh, you know being a mandatory challenger for Danny Garcia who's considered you know a, definitely a top 10 pound for pound and probably the best fighter at 140 so uh, both of these guys have a lot to lose but especially Paul so far not too much action going on here both fighters kind of feeling each other out it looks like This is a much more calculated version of Paul Spadafore. If you remember the first incarnation, he was very, he would he would throw a lot of punches, move a lot, circle a lot. Man, now the nice short left hook there. Now he's sitting in the pocket, slipping punches and trying to make Perez pay. Spadafore ducks out of the way of that Perez shot. Shoots out the jab, falls a little bit short. Perez shoots out his jab and falls short as well. Did you expect Paul to be the pressure fighter in this fight? Uh, no, I, just a little bit I've seen of Perez. He doesn't really use his height. I, I expected him to come forward and Paul kind of stand his ground and use that superior upper body movement to avoid shots and get his shots in. I'll say that this is by far the sharpest spat of four I've seen in the, in the recent four fight comeback. Uh, definitely as far as out of the gates goes for sure usually takes him about three or four rounds to get warmed up but he's looking on point tonight 10 seconds left here in round one all right first round over not much landed by either fighter i would think paul probably had the edge on a couple more shots well, like Max Kellerman says, who would I rather be in that situation? I'd rather be Paul Spadafore. I do agree there. You would believe if there were any nerves that first round, they're gone. He looked settled. He didn't look nervous at all. But if there were any, you would think they'd be out now, correct? Absolutely. Well, he's been on this stage. It really, for him, it was just about getting back into the into the ring and getting into these fights. I think he's just been he's been chasing these big fights for as long as. You know, it's, it's been a decade he's been chasing these fights with issues in and out of the ring, but you know, he wants these big fights. And Johan Perez is a legitimate, the number three ranked WBA contender in the world. He's a hungry young guy, and Golden Boy would not sign a guy if he was not top level. He is an elite fighter. It's the first elite fighter that Paul Spadafora has stepped into the ring with since his, his comeback. And uh, you know, only time will tell as this fight unfolds. It's the whistle for round two. And we're underway. To set in the ring. Perez pumps out that jab very quickly. Paul's throwing a jab out there. Looks more like a range finder than something that's trying to do too much damage. Perez throwing punches, but just uh, not being able to find him. Missed with the left hand there. It's about a four ducked under it. One thing I can say already is that uh, Paul has found a way to slow down the normal output of uh, Johan Perez. This is a guy that throws, you know, 80 plus punches, at least the fights that I have seen, and uh, and and he's just not. He, they're very much fighting at the pace that Spadafore needs to fight at, especially early on. Spadafore is throwing that jab out there, Perez. Pumping his jab, but not following it up with much of anything. Landed a decent left hand there to the head of Spada Four. Perez got in with a nice right hand. Steps to the side and gets away out of danger. Spada Four reached with that left hand there, fell a little bit short counter from Perez was not successful. Yeah, you definitely don't see much of that from Spadafor normally. This is a much better round for Perez. I, I think Spadafor won the first round. I think Perez is doing a much better job in the second. 
Spider 4 landed a decent left hand lead to the body there. Perez came through with two nice shots to the head. Nice combination there from Perez. Spider 4 pushes him back to the ropes with that jab. Through a winging right hand, didn't land. There's a nice shot to the body. There's a left hand to the body. Another nice left hand to the body. Doing a lot of body work here in round one or round two, excuse me. Well, it is a 12 round fight and he knows that this, this kid, I mean, that's a pretty wide target. He's a very thin guy. He looks a lot better than he did at, at uh, when, when we met him on Wednesday at the press conference. He was, it was tough traveling from Venezuela to make weight. And you know, I don't know how well he was eating to make the weight. He made it easily, but uh, you know, I don't know how, how that, uh, that weight cut was on his body. So the best way to uh, test that weight cut is to work the body early. Spadafore has done a beautiful jab up top. It opens up that left of the body. He's done that about four times this round now. Ducking under Perez's shots there. That's it for round two. As you said, Perez started off better, but uh, Spider 4 did better down the stretch, I'd say. Well, I'd say the momentum going into the uh, third round would be to Spider 4 based on the last uh, you know, little bit that he did, but Perez did enough work early on, in my opinion, to win that round. As I was we were talking about pressure earlier, and the reports out there are that to add more pressure, if he wins, that Golden Boy will sign him. Now that's... Mike, do you think that's more pressure than even, you know, fighting in front of your fans and your first big fight in 10 years? Well, I mean, it's all equal. I mean, you're fighting in front of your fans and, and your, re your relevancy and your, le your legacy is on the line. A win here, you're 49-0-1 regardless of there's an 0-1, and I hear people saying, well, it's not with Russell. It's not the same era, but the accomplishment doesn't isn't any less. So yeah. it, it's pressure on both ends. Pressure for a career, big money fights, fights that will make the difference in his family's life. And also, you know, the pressure of, of headlining a card that's full tonight. Great combination. Four comes out, yes. Good combination. Paul's making a miss now. He's, he's getting in that punching range and, and slay it. Oh, see the a check nice hook. right hook there, as you said. Like you said, he's making a miss more and more frequently. As I say that, Perez lands two nice shots. Oh, Perez is slick, you can tell. There's a lot of game there. This is an elite fighter. Out of four backs up, throws the right hand out. Perez went for the uppercut as Paul dipped down, but Gray's passed about a four shoulder. Perez gets there with a long left hand, but didn't seem to have much pop behind it. Caught that on the glove. Yeah. Blocked it, that despite all the, the sweat or water you saw flying. Yeah. Perez Paul, misses huge. Was, it, was that a hook or an uppercut? Well, it was, it was a, <laughs> it was a it mix. Was an, yeah, it was a mix of a, of a hook and an uppercut. And those are the ones, you can't hit spatter four with those kinds of punches. You gotta, you gotta stick to your game plan and, and use those, those straight sharp shots and, and use your length. And that's the one thing I, did, I haven't seen with Perez in any of the fights that I watched, is he just doesn't use the length that he has. He leans in a lot. And I thought, you know, looking at the, at the matchup, that that would be the key for Paul was to counter the counter. Get off first, counter the counter. Got a four tripped up there a little bit. No harm, no foul. And they'll go back to fighting. Perez comes at him hard, but he catches those on the gloves. Pops his jab out there. Doesn't follow up on it. Has a nice left hand there. That left hand seems to be pretty effective for Perez if there is a punch that's being effective for him. Paul avoids the left hand there. There's a left of his own, falls just a little bit short. Paul 
Prez got a decent left hook to the head, but Paul was rolling with that, so the impact was probably very nice. Battlefield with a nice right hand. Pumps that left to the body yet again. 10 seconds left in the round. Another left to the body. If you would have told me 10 years ago that uh, Paul Spadafore landed the more meaningful punches in a round, yeah. uh, I, wouldn't have, uh, I wouldn't have believed you, but that was definitely what happened in that round. I think he came on later, and, and it was a close, close competitive round, but uh, I think Paul did land the, the harder shots. How frustrating is it for a guy like Prez? You know that you're going to miss. You know that coming in. But you'll, you, you think, I'm going to land the more effective shots. So how frustrating is it for him now he's not landing and he's not landing the harder punches the few times that he does land. What well, does that do to you mentally? Well, mentally, it'll, it, it'll, it starts to work against you based on your game plan. You think that it's going to go a certain way, and then it doesn't. You start questioning yourself. But, you know, he's a young guy. And, I mean, a young guy as far as in boxing, 18, you know, 19 fights. This is only his 20th fight. So I look for Paul to, uh, well, I look, if Paul wants to win this fight, he has to up his work rate. I mean, he was doing good work. I just like to see you know, a, a better work weight. If I'm Johan Perez, I'd like to see more more rangy movement, more length, him using the jab from a distance and trying to make Paul earn his way in. Here we go, start around four. Starts out much like the other rounds, with Paul pumping the jab, throwing it left. Perez goes to the body, but those are partially blocked by Paul. Paul lands a stinging straight left to the head. Gets the crowd going. Perez clipped him with the punch there. Perez shoots to the left, but again, Paul rolls with it. Paul just barely missed with a winging right hand. Perez throws that right, but it lands on the high guard of Spada 4, no damage done. As you can hear Tommy Ankello, he's, he's asking for the bob and weave, put the pressure on. You think that's something Paul should be doing? Absolutely, I, I was looking in this round for him to really up the pace, it's just, it's a very competitive round again. It's like, nobody's really separating themselves and, and those kinds of close rounds, you know, regardless of the hometown, these are these are veteran judges. They they're not uh, they're not swayed by the hometown crowd. They're they're judging based on what they're seeing. Now a lot of Perez's punches are landing on the gloves and the arms, but the fact that Paul is backing up from those sometimes that'll trip a judge. Do you think uh, you know backing up is hurting him at this moment because it looks like Perez is being more effective? Well, I think Perez is just taking the play from him with his combination punching. I think that's the that's the the main thing. He's, there's that that jab that Perez is throwing. Now that if I'm in his corner, this is the this is the type of fight I'm making. I'm making Paul earn his way in. He's, he's got a nice mouse under his right eye now from from that jab. Make him earn his way in. And and you know Tommy Ancelo's yelling instructions the same way. Battle four has a cut above the left uh -oh. eye. And it's a bad one. It looks like it's bleeding a fairly decent amount. And as you said, he has a mouse under the right eye, but that's pretty standard for his battle four fight. E every fight. He seems to have very thin skin. Looks like the bridge of the nose might have a little red on it too, on the right side. Paul lands a decent left hand there after pushing Perez back onto the ropes. Perez comes back with a hook to the head, but again, blocked on the high guard of Spada 4. Throws three jabs, followed up by a right, but again, lands on the gloves. Spada 4 makes him miss that big right. Best round of the fight so far for uh, Johan Perez. Again, this is Dan Jay along with my broadcast partner, Tyler Curtis. Round four in the books. So what do you got it after four? I have a two rounds apiece. I gave that round to Johan Perez. Are you concerned with the cut or should his well, corner be concerned it, with that yeah, cut? Yeah, it didn't bleed. It didn't bleed yet, so we don't know. 
But uh, I was a little more concerned with the fact that it seemed like Paul got a little bit winded in that round and didn't, uh, didn't have the punch output that he had in round three. Although he did land a pretty, a pretty huge left hand early in the round, it was almost forgotten because of the good work that Perez did down the stretch. Also should mention here, you know, you got the standard Tommy Yankello and his guys are in the corner, but also Buddy McGirt in the corner for Mr. Paul's battle forward tonight. Well, they brought Buddy in as an extra set of eyes. You can never have too many great eyes on your fighter getting ready for a fight. And, uh, you know, hey, that may make a big difference in the adjustments as, as the fight progresses from, uh, see, Perez, Perez feels something. He's, Came he's out hard. This is where Paul's got to take the play away from him. This, this kid's hungry. Looks like as of right now, the cut is dealt with. We'll nice. see if it opens up. There's a nice left in there by Spadafore. Tried to shoot the uppercut and missed it. Had a winging right hand land there as they exchanged. Throws that right to the body this time, or excuse me, the left of the body yet again. Although if you'd have said after four rounds, if I'm uh, Spider Forest people, would I be happy with a 2-2 with a score after four rounds? I would be. He's a slow starter, traditionally. Yeah, usually I was going to say about round five, is if he's better than you and he's going to take over the fight, it happens five, six. If you remember, Frankly jumped on him the first two rounds and you know just really out-hustled him with those, those uh, fast, meaningless punches, but Spider Forest came on in that fight as well. Press throws two punches to the head there. Again, caught on the gloves of Spadafora. Spadafora pumps out the jab, moves Perez back. Perez still not like, connecting on a ton of his shots. Paul's still reaching. He's reaching with that left to the body. Put the jab into the face of Perez, then follow up. Did it again, the follow up. Again, Perez lands a shot to the head, but it was on the gloves. I'd like to see more head movement from Paul as well. He needs to get off that center line. When, when Perez does land like just there, yep. it's because he's, he's backing away or moving forward with his head on that center line. A nice right hand, but Paul clear-headed, coming back on the offensive. Pumps that left to the body yet again. Perez went for the long right hand, did not connect. Nice short left in there from Spada Four. Covers up there and blocks that right hand yet again. Left to the body as he pushes Perez back to the ropes. There's Paul has not there. gotten into his rhythm yet. There's no question about that. Johan Perez has taken the play away from him in this round especially. And he's really, he's, he's stringing together some good work. That cut above the right eye seems to be bleeding a little bit. But I also should mention if I'm going to Mention Buddy McGirt also has Buzz Garnick, very uh, veteran trainer, very good. Trains Rod Selka, an up and comer. He'll be fighting on Showtime Extreme against Canelo Alvarez's younger, no, older brother, Ricardo. Ricardo. So he'll be getting a chance there. Another Pittsburgh fighter to watch out for from the area. But another uh, tight round there. Uh, it's going to be very interesting to see how these are scored, especially for me. I didn't necessarily agree with the last two fights, so me and the judges are different pages tonight, so it's going to be interesting to see what happens there. Well, I thought Perez clearly won that round, uh, and I thought he clearly won the other round, the fourth round and the fifth round. He's just he's fighting at a pace and at a distance that, he, that benefits, that benefits uh, him. Spadafora needs to push the pace. He's got to up the amount of punches thrown. It's, it's, it's one of his Achilles heels. He just doesn't always throw enough punches. Perez come out quickly, landed a good right hand there. I see a different energy from Spadafora right out of the gate. 
and it is round six. This is uh, the time he likes to, to kick things up. That left of the body, he's very committed to that left of the body. Perez is doing a great job of countering with the right hand, but Paul needs to counter the counter back with the left hook. Excuse me, the right hook. Throwing the jab out there, lands a decent one. They both miss with jabs there. Left to the body, two, two straight lefts to the body. Perez gets a very short left hook. Uh, Paul has it. Paul, his cut is open. If, if it's not the same cut, it's a new cut. It's it's long. Uh, it's even bigger than the last cut. Above that left eye. Perez lands a nice left to the body. Very thudding shot here at ringside. It would appear that those cuts, cuts or cut, are not bleeding at all. Which they may be bad, but if they're not bleeding in the eye, that's a good sign. You know, they're not bleeding at all, which is very rare. Yeah, it's a, a weird thing to see. And a little bit of a nice left hand there from Perez. And the little bit of blood that is coming is on the outside of the eye, which is where you would like for it to run. Try to four up. Three nice shots strung together by Perez. A nice left hand sent blood flying out of that cut. Spada four goes back to the body with the left, up top with the right hand. Perez lands two left hands there. Spada four again comes back to the body. Those two shots got in a little bit. From Perez, who's got a four answer quickly with the right hand to the head. I, I just don't know what what is uh, what is mesmerizing Paul from engaging offensively. Yeah, Perez isn't throwing anything out there that's that There's, spectacular. Yeah, I, I mean he's very conventional. He's very straight. He's not throwing bombs. He's 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 out. He's just outworking him. It really comes down to it. I don't know if it's a conditioning thing. He's having trouble getting his breath. The crowd's now getting into it. He, they need to, yeah, they need a spatty champ to get him back because right now Perez is uh, is doing a number. I believe Perez, Perez might cut. have a cut. Yes, cut. over the right eye. Over the right eye. That's right. six rounds in the books. Halfway through, what do you want to see these fighters change? What did, or what did, what did they need to change if they want to pull this out in the last six rounds and call themselves a world champion? Perez doesn't need to change anything. He's uh, he's doing he's working his game plan. He's throwing more punches. He's he's uh, he's not necessarily picking shots because Paul's not necessarily throwing shots. Yeah. And uh, I think an adjustment by Spatafora to uh, to throw more punches, I think, would make uh, make the fight a completely different fight. But right now. He's not dictating the pace. The pace is being fought at Johan Perez's pace, and that is why he's winning this fight. All right, here we go. About to start up round number seven into the second half of the fight, and here we go. Spider four comes out a thudding left to the body. As I've said many times, very committed to that punch. He's hoping that that pays off in the second half of this fight. Whoever's doing the cut work on, on Spider Force cuts did a great job of closing everything up. I do agree. Perez landing multiple punches there. Looks like the Vaseline has fallen did, off that cut. Did they? How did they roll that? Did they roll it a uh, a punch? Or a uh, headbutt. The cut? Yes. Actually, I'm not. I do not know. Paul gets in there. The winging right hand. Perez comes back. There's three shots. Nothing. Two cutting lands there. Does get through a decent right hand on Spadafore's head. It's a more competitive round. Paul's landing some shots, but again, Johan is also. His cut is bleeding a little bit more. 
blocks than Spadafores is, but like I said earlier, it's bleeding on the outside of the eye, which is where you would want it to if you had to be cut. Yeah, I don't think that, uh, in considering the ramifications of uh, the WBA interim championship, I don't think they're gonna stop these fights on cuts unless they're, they're truly causing guys to, to not be able to see out of those eyes. Perez missed his shot there, but Spadafore must have been off balance. That stumble was not from a punch. He goes with the left of the body again. Another left of the body. Perez goes for that hooker cut type punch. Missed it yet again. Seems to like that punch, even though I don't think it's landed one time. It's a very close round. Perez is throwing more punches again. Got through with the lead left there. Perez did. The chant kicks up this, or the crowd, excuse me, kicks up the spot of four chance. Tries to give him some energy here. I still feel like the fight is not being fought at Paul's distance. And, uh, and Perez has had the, th that is his advantage. He's fighting the longer fight. Paul has to get in his grill. That was a beautiful straight left by Paul Spadafora. That was after a double jab. He's been throwing the jab out there, but that's one of the few times he's thrown something behind it. Maybe Spadafora needs to get the legs moving, start giving angles. Because fighting in the pocket has not been very successful the last few rounds. Perez landed a nice left hook there. Spadafora comes back with another left of the body. Perez barely misses with that uppercut to the head. He does, though, connect with that left hook. Nice. Another left hook. It's got a four answer quickly with the left of his own. Very tight round, Spadafora looked much better though. Yeah, I gave that round to Spadafora based on the clean power punching. Even the punches that Perez did land in that round were not the, the, the power punching. And again, sometimes you, you when you're judging a fight, and I'm not a judge, that's why they're bringing in judges, uh, you sometimes look at what a guy's doing better in a round and maybe it shines a little bit, but, but I still felt like Spadafora landed the cleaner punches in that round. There's no doubt that this is gonna be a very interesting fight coming down the stretch. And like always, tonight, I should say, not like always in boxing, but like tonight, another competitive fight put on by TNT Promotions, matchmaker Mark Ankello. Gotta give him a hand for every fight that was Absolutely. on this card tonight. Well, you're talking about two elite level guys right now. I mean, you can just see there's a, there's a, there's a high level of craft. There's not a lot of separation between these two guys. Spadafora gets through a left there early on. Spadafora still reaching too much. Oh, he got caught right on the cut. Yeah, Perez caught him with a uh, right hook it looks up here to be. Spada four misses wildly with a hook. Well, there's a certain amount of ring rust if you're if you're talking about having not fought since last April, Spada four, and I think I saw it early on. He's definitely not as slick as, as he's normally. Moments ago, Perez got through a nice right hand to the head of Spada four. Out of four thirds, the jab follows it up with the left hand. He's got him pushed up on the ropes. Great head movement by Spadafora there. He's, he's still got to throw in combinations, and that, that's what Perez is doing. He's, he's throwing more punches. I don't have punch stat numbers in front of me, but the naked eye says he's throwing more punches. Spadafora did land two good right hooks to the body. Got him up on the ropes, so he's just not doing any work while he's got him there. Perez rips him with the left to the body. Spadafora answered 
with the right to the body. Press throwing combination, there's three punches. Lands two good left hooks to the head of Spadafora there. If anything surprises me, it's it's the uh, how easily Perez has been able to hit Spadafora. The head movement is just it's just not been what is, has been textbook Spadafora, even in the comeback. Spadafora gets through there. I and mean, that is there all day. That that nice combination left. is there all day for Spadafora. He just isn't throwing it. Spadafora throws two jabs, spins his way off of the ropes. Spadafora looks tired. So round comes to an end here, he pumps the jab out. Round number nine, the Royal Browns for the WBA Championship of the World. Fight's getting on here, only got nine, 10, 11, 12, four rounds left. How do you have it scored? Well, I have Perez up. Uh, I've only given Spada four three rounds, so uh, five rounds to three for uh, Johan Perez. So you're thinking at the, well, your, your card's saying that Spada four got a rally and get these last four rounds if he wants to walk out of here as the super lightweight interim world champion of the WBA. Well, another thing too you have to take into consideration is if, if you're a judge who, who favors volume punching, it, it, could, be, it could be a wider margin. I, True. He, he's not his punches that he's landing on Paul. I didn't. I don't feel like are having the effect that when Paul does throw, he's having. And that just that sounds so such a off the wall thing to talk about a Paul Spadafora fight. Yes. That he's landing the harder punches. He's just not throwing enough of them. Comes out quickly. There's a Spadafora does that is. Comes out. To the left to the body there. Goes back to stalking. He's got a short left in there. I don't think it did too much damage, though. Spada four steps back and has a nice right to the body. Now, you'd have to believe this body work. He's done a lot of it. You have to think it's, it's going to show up here in these last four rounds. I'm not seeing any fading out of Perez. I'm very surprised. I really thought that weight cut was good. But again, Spada 4 is not putting the type of in-your-face pressure that uh, that would be necessary. And Perez, is, is, he's really sharpshooting now. He's, he's pulling back and throwing hard right hands because he knows that, that Spada 4's punches are not coming back in combination. There's that double jab out there. Right hand didn't really connect, but again, like you said, he's just throwing the volume. That might be what he needs. There's the right hand there, pushes Paul back, but it landed on the gloves. Paul shoots a jab, steps away, but again, nothing behind it. Perez lands a thudding right hand to the head of Spadafora. I mean, Perez is fighting the perfect fight. He's, he's slicking and, and moving, he's jabbing, he's keeping his distance. Spadafora has got to sell out at this juncture. I mean, and just start to, to close the distance, bobbing and weaving, take a page out of the Manny Pacquiao, uh, Juan Manuel Marquez book where, and there's a great oh, job right man. there. And then a nice left hook to the jaw of Perez. Perez pumps that, oh, comes in with another. There's the first nice rally from Spada 4 I've seen in, in four rounds. But Perez is making sure to throw his hands. Threw left in there, appeared to get in. Threw three punches there, it didn't appear any, got through the gloves. A nice left hand as he pushed Perez back onto the ropes. He's got Perez stuck. The crowd's really getting into it now.
Throws a jab out there, follows it up with the left. It's some of the cleanest Nothing work connected. Spadafore has had as far as power punching. That's it, end of round number nine. Round nine. Round number 10. So we're here. For the WBA Super Lightweight Championship of the World. So we're here in round 10. This is a 12 round fight for the WBA Interim World Championship in the Super Lightweight Division. A lot on the line for both of these guys. A win puts you in line to face maybe a Danny Garcia, who is the super champion of this body. So a lot online for both men. And it's a tight fight here. It's gonna come down to these last three rounds, that's for sure. Oh, there's no question about it. The fight's still on the table. I still have Perez slightly ahead, but, uh, but the fight is definitely still on the table. Especially if Spadafore implements his game plan and implements his, his style that he has shown for 49 consecutive fights. I do agree there. If he just, I don't know what it, I, like you said, I don't know why he's not putting the pressure on. I don't see anything from Perez. Again, we're not in the ring. This is just us watching it, but I don't see uh, why he can't come out for the last three rounds and put a lot of pressure and make this kid wilt. Comes out here to meet in the center of the ring. He, he really needs to, to uh, put something together that'll allow the crowd to get back into this. There's, oh, that was a nice straight left. left. Hand. Again, a stumble there. Didn't stumble from the punch, though. They both throw to the body with bad intentions. Perez goes up top, lands a right, then a left. Spadafora pushes him back to the ropes. This is some of the best work Spadafora's had. Two shots oh, at the body. Shot. Perez comes back with some bombs to the head, though. Spot a four lane to the left and then a grazing right hand while Perez had his back to the ropes. But again, Perez answers quickly, throws two shots to the head. A nice jab landed there by Spot four. Where's that jab been? Where's the, where has that jab that dictates the pace been? Both of them missed with shots there. Two punch combination, barely missed for Spot of Four as they both clinch here. Spot of Four throws out the jab, but again, nothing behind it. Prez is slowing a lot. Prez lands a nice left as Spot of Four landed a right to the body. Landed a nice right to the head of Spada Four. Another nice left to the head of Spada Four. Again, a left to the head. Left hand seems to be there for Perez. Get their feet tangled up there, but neither fighter stumbles or falls. And in a cuffing right there from Spadafora. That's the kind of Spadafora move right there, the slip. Press still is able to dictate the fight from the outside. He's still fighting this fight. It's really a great game plan by Perez. Again, I don't know if, if, it's, if it's as much what, uh, what Perez is doing I mean, he's just fighting his fight as far as the game plan goes or if uh, just the lack of, of punch output by Spadafora is, is what's uh, causing the problems. Now into the championship round. For a championship card for your continued support of boxing here at the R. I know you touched upon it. Are you... 
surprised to see no jab from Spadafore and a little bit of head movement. I'm surprised at the performance right now. I'm surprised at the game plan. I don't. I don't. Uh, I don't think this is what they worked on in the gym as far as uh, not the lack of head movement. Again, you're talking about nine months. A 38-year-old guy who hasn't fought much in the last 10 years, who's had nine months off. He, he's not sharp. This is not a sharp performance yeah. by Paul Spadafora. Win, lose, or draw. It's not a. It's not. This is not what he's capable of, of uh, putting forth. And I think he would admit it. He did look sharp early on, but they clinch there very quickly. The ref separates him. He goes with the left to the body. And still in saying that, from a scoring perspective, a, you know, the fight, it, it's, it's still close. I mean, it, it, it still could go either way if, if uh, Spadafore does step on the gas pedal and win these last two rounds. Spadafore, a nice defense there, ducks under those shots. Pawing with the right hand, throws it left to the body. Blocks that right hand from Perez. Covers up. Takes that left from Perez on the gloves and then shoots the jab out. Lands with the left there, left to the body again. Perez throwing punches, but again, all of them are caught on Spadafore's gloves. Battle four comes with the left to the body. That right hand did not land for Perez. Grazed the head of Battle four. He did get that right through, get got that left through on Battle four. Got a four show good defense here though. This is the best defense I've seen. I tell you what, Perez, I gotta give the guy credit. He's been throwing punches nonstop. Landing or not, he's throwing them. Crowd gets behind Spada Four, tries to give him a little bit of energy here. <laughs> he's picking shots in the 11th round. Does it take you 10 rounds to get started? I'm seeing some vintage Spadafora in this round. Yes, very odd. And that's Man's a nice long left hand. Shoots it left again. The, the movement is slipping. Perez misses with a wild left hand there. Spadafora comes back. Spadafor landing a nice right to the body. Perez comes back with a right to the body of his own. Goes Pre to the body again. Perez has just done a great job of when Spadafor does have a, a good round like this round. He he, uh, he doesn't let it build too far. He he, get, he gets the play back from him. And that's, that's the great job that he's done. 10 seconds here in the 11th round. Perez throwing more, but again, not landing much. All right, heading into the 12th and final round of this WBA Interim World Championship fight at the Super Lightweight Division. It all comes down to this round. Spadafore wants to come out of this fight at 49-0-1 as a world champion. He's going to need to leave it in there. It's a very close fight. As we've mentioned on this fight and previous fights, scoring is very subjective. I could see scores going one way and I can see scores going another way. So this round is very important. Yeah, and there's no question that uh, the, the rounds that uh, that um, Johan Perez won were more convincing rounds. There's no doubt about that. However, those close rounds, you're, you're still fighting in, in, in Paul Spadafore's backyard. And when the crowd erupts, it, you know, it could have a, a sway on a judge who's not sure which way the uh, decision could go. So it's, it's still a very close fight. I wouldn't be surprised if this round is is what wins well, this is a, or draw or whatever. This round is this very is pivotal. A very, I mean, this, this round could be the difference right now. There's no question. Here we are, the 12th round of this World Championship title fight. They come out swinging hard. Oh, man, this, they're after it. 
They both won it. Spadafora got through with a nice right, another nice right. He's landing the much more effective shots early on in this round. That left graze the glove of Perez. Perez comes back with the left. Regardless what you say about Paul Spadafora, the guys come back literally like he told me from the dead for real. And yes. uh, this is a win, whether he wins it on the scorecard or not, he's given a great account of himself against the number three ranked WBA contender in the world at age 38. And Perez, hey, you're going in there and you're gonna be the, you know, if you win this fight, you're gonna be the first guy to beat a man who had a very long title reign and uh, has found a way to win every one of his fights with the after, exception of the one draw. After that hard start to cool down here a little bit, Spada four got a nice left hand through there. Barely missed with another left. Perez comes with the right hand. It appeared to land on the head of Spada four. Perez barely missed with the right there. Spada four is still committed to the left of the body. Better in combination there, lands two of those, but Perez comes back quickly with the left and a right, but Spada four digs a left hand to the body. That, that shook him. <laughs> that, that did appear to baller Perez. Spad four uh, reached with that and took a right hand for his efforts. There's another right to the body, excuse me, left to the body. Gonna clinch here. Ref's gonna separate him. Got a four flicking out the jab. Again, throws the left to the body. It's another round in the balance. There's two guys there. To th it's what do you like? Yep. Do you like the heart? Do you like the power punches of Spadafora? The body work of Spadafora? Do you like the volume punching of Perez? It's, it's just a, for the viewers at home, this is a sitting ringside. It's just a very interesting contrast of styles. Hard fight to score, and I'm trying to do it. Yeah, I don't envy these judges tonight. The clinch here. 10 seconds left, let's see what they got. Fight ends with Spadafora getting one or two more shots in there in the final 10 seconds. We're gonna go to the cards, and this should be very interesting. Very interesting. Like I said, I can see uh, very different scorecards and again, like you said, scoring is subjective. You're also sitting on different sides of the ring. You may see something totally different than the guy across from you. We're sitting right next to a judge, and then there's a judge completely straight across from us. So there's, they're seeing a completely different angle than, uh, than we're seeing. So I really learned to appreciate by sitting ringside and, and calling a fight the, uh, the intricacies that go into scoring a fight, truly. Regardless, but both guys, regardless of the decision, it was a close fight. Both guys are elite guys. Spot of four, age 38. Regardless, he, he can still fight. And uh, Perez, I tell you what, he uh, he showed a lot. He showed a lot. There's there there's uh, the winner of this fight is going to have bigger fights and more meaningful fights in front of him. I think he, both men here, whoever wins, whoever loses, if it's a draw, they both set themselves up. They get very good account of themselves. And I think they both have, maybe not super, the loser might not have really big fights in the future, but they're both gonna have big fights in their future. Buddy McGurda and Tommy Ankello, they seem pretty confident that Paul did pull out the decision. With Golden Boy Productions being here, I, uh, Golden Boy Promotions, Productions, uh, I, would, uh, I wouldn't be surprised if, uh, if they uh, did both of them. Put these two guys in the ring again. I mean, this is a fight worth seeing again. I, there's no question about it. Sign Spadafora and get them, uh, get them back in the yeah, ring again. Yeah, I'd like to see this maybe with Spadafora on five months rest, a little bit sharper. I'd like to see Spadafora on three months rest. I mean, I think he was, he was very uh, rusty. Um, 
you know, the whole way, uh, the first really 10 rounds, I saw a better spot of floor in the last two uh, from what I'm used to seeing. So great effort by both guys. What Paul Spadafor has been going through to get back to this point, back to this elite level, he's already won the fight, like he said at the fighter meetings. And uh, Johan Perez uh, is, has put himself on the map, win, lose, or draw. on the scorecards here a lot of commotion at ringside I can't really tell I can't really oh there we go ladies and gentlemen before we go to the scorecards another round of applause for a hard fought championship contest the final bell has rung and your judges have spoken Judge James T who scores at 115-113 Perez. Judge Glenn Feldman, 114-114, a draw. And Judge Rex Agan saw it 117 to 111 for your winner by majority decision and the new WBA champion, Johan. Al-Talib Perez! There you heard the decision. Perez pulls out a very close fight as we thought it would be. And he is the new interim WBA super lightweight champion. 117, 111. I didn't have it that wide, but like, like we said, it's subjective and you know, different angles, you know, who knows what they see. It was a, yeah, see. a lot of close rounds that uh, it's all what you're cheering for. Yeah, that was that was a little bit high. There's, it wasn't highway robbery by saying it. it no, was, no, not by any means. All right, I'm with the winner and then the new interim WBA champion, Johan Perez. You came into hostile territory and you were able to capture gold. Uh, dice que eh, viniste acá a un territorio que no es el tuyo y que te ha portado muy bien. Bueno, sí, vine, vine a lo, a lo que quería ganar. Este, este público, gran público, un aplauso al público, ustedes mismos, que dan, que dieron ánimo, porque son del contrario y eso me hace más fuerte. He says that he came over here to win, and the public, uh, the, 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 the was so the noise is so inspiring that they get them going all night. Talk to us about your opponent, Paul Spadafora. He came in here undefeated, also a former world champion. How hard was he in the squared circle tonight? How much did he test you? Felicitaciones a Pazora, un buen peleador, muchacho aguerrido. Y bueno, lo, lo vi muy bien. Y bueno, sé que estaba invicto y vine, vine también por eso, a quitarle el invicto y a llevarme la corona. Y a eso vine y lo hice y que viva Venezuela. He respected Pazora, he was a good boxer, he put a very good fight, but he came to win and that's what he did. Well, congratulations, you're the new world champion. Gracias, gracias. Y un saludo a toda Venezuela y a mi hijo Justin, que debe estar mirando. Hijo, te amo, papá. Thank you very much, and he's giving him a regard to his son and his own country, Venezuela. Thank you. Fight fans, we'd like to thank you for coming out to Mountaineer Racetrack Resort and Casino. All right, so for that is it from the hard. Champion, Champion, Champion. Champion.
All right, that's it from the Harv. Uh, you know, the hometown crowd's not going to go home happy, but a great fight. Uh, what do you think about the night of fights here? Well, I think it was a great card top to bottom, close competitive fights, uh, great judging. I mean, really, uh, everybody, uh, uh, there was other than, other than, I don't think it was a draw in, in the uh, Santiago and uh, Draper fight, but uh, I, think, I think the judging was, was very good. This was a close fight, could have went either way. A lot of... Our main event saw a crowning of a new champion. Johan right. Perez went the distance with the Pittsburgh kid Paul Spadafora and captured the WBA what? Interim World Championship. Yes, uh, Perez uh, fought a very tough fight. He did a great job. I think uh, it could it could have went either way. It was a lot of swing rounds in that fight, but uh, you know he you can't say one way or the other. If you agree, if you're a Perez guy, you know you might have scored it even more. If you're a Spadafora guy. You know, you may be disappointed because it was it was a close fight, but you know the, the judges that's what they do. They're professionals. And Johan Perez, he is now the new world champion, second time he has captured gold. Both fighters gave a good account of themselves, and I don't think that Spadafor should be ashamed of himself. He's 38 years old. He went through a lot in his life, and he was here in the ring tonight, gave a great account of himself, and just barely didn't retain that world title. You know, one judge had a draw. But we have a new champion. On behalf of GoFightLive.tv, we'd like to thank you for tuning in this evening for another bout of World Championship Boxing.